What's up everyone, it's uh, Caddy with MoneyVest. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about, of course, the markets. I'm going to give you guys an entire update and also talk a little bit about inflation numbers, which came out earlier today. We were live during that time at 8.30 a.m. Eastern to cover the entire CPI report for the month of February. We did get in a little bit hotter than what the expectations were. Uh, on the headline basis, month over month, we came in line with expectations, but on the other three measures of inflation, so CPI year over year, core CPI year over year, and core CPI month over month, we came in a little bit hotter than what the expectations were. So I'm going to break down, uh, of course, uh, the inflation numbers in a little bit more detail, kind of my thoughts and my views on interest rate expectations now moving forward. I also did share our newsletter with everybody on uh, on our group, on our Discord. So again, if you want to get access to our weekly newsletters, uh, including our trade alerts and investable and tradable opportunities, I included the Magnificent 7 analysis, as well as my thoughts on unemployment on uh, inflation and four scenarios I shared in our newsletter with respect to different scenarios on unemployment and inflation and where interest rates may end up going and how many rate cuts we can expect in 2024 based on those scenarios. Link's going to be down below. So there is a 16% annual discount with very few and limited spots available. If you want to access it, of course, join our MoneyVest community. And uh, we're, we've got to, we're going to be launching the MoneyVest.com platform here very soon where there's a lot of features available for your personal finance dashboard, including portfolio tracking, as well as fundamental analysis and macro analysis as well. So so again, link's going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board. Now, one of the things that I want to highlight here is please do not listen to these types of market predictions, right? This is exactly one of my, again, reasons why market predictions are absolute BS. So Goldman Sachs, company GS is offering a very much of a BS prediction because this right here in terms of markets reaction function, they were expecting the um, S&P 500 to drop to drop by 0.75% to 1.7% if the core inflation, core month over month, came in at 0.36% or higher. So if we saw a 36 basis point increase month over month in core inflation or higher, they were expecting S&P to drop by 75 basis points to as much as 1.75%. Well, guess what? The markets were very, very green. If you come over to the S&P 500, we were actually up on the day, up over 1% very, very strongly, right? So again, if you go through these predictions, you can absolutely get crushed. Please, 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 please do me a favor. Stop making predictions. Stop making what the market's going to do. And that is so important. That's an important lesson that I've learned over time is that even if I tell you the inflation numbers for next week, next month, right? Today, we just got the inflation numbers. Even if I tell you that, look, I know what March's inflation numbers are going to be. I know what March CPI is going to be. Here's the numbers. I bet you'd still not be able to trade the markets on that very same day, knowing fully what, what's going to be in that report. Because markets are so chaotic. Markets are so um, kind of, you know, very, very volatile in a way that they, they don't always do what everyone expects them to do. They don't always do what you expect them to do, right? They can do different things. They can react in different ways. Um, and that's a very, very good case in point that even if you've got the understanding or the report itself on what's going to come out, we still might not be able to trade it. Same thing with earnings calls, right? Same thing with companies that are reporting their earnings. Even if you do know the earnings, uh, for whatever reason, you understand, okay, what's the company's reporting uh, earnings and revenue? you still don't know where the markets are going, where you still don't know how the stock's going to react after the earnings come out. And that's what makes the markets so interesting. So definitely do ignore um, a lot of these predictions here. So when it comes to uh, CPI month over month coming in at 0.4% on the headline, uh, year over year sitting at 3.2%, X food and energy core inflation 0.4%, and X food and energy over here at 3.8%. Now I will uh, have to agree, uh, I'll have to kind of uh, accept the, the idea that I was not correct on my analysis of being a, for being in a rug pull because S&P 500 pushing up over 1%, NASDAQ here also rallying, uh, you know, back over 1.5% and the Dow Jones also pushing higher, uh, a little bit over 61 basis points is not something I expected on such a hot print on CPI. So I'll, I'll, I'll accept this, that I was wrong on the live stream, kind of expecting a rug pull, uh, you know, expecting the market to, let's say, drop back down on such a hot print, because ideally, I mean, you'd think about where the CPI numbers ended up and where we are uh, with respect to inflation and economic growth and unemployment starting to move higher. Uh, you'd expect for the markets to not get a good reaction out of this because of how 
um, how hot this inflation report was coming in, you know, hotter than than all the consensus, uh, you know, on three accounts. So that should be pretty self-explanatory that, OK, we're getting a little bit more stagnating CPI core sitting still above 3.8 percent, well above the Fed's target. Unemployment ticked up from 3.7 to 3.9 percent. You think to yourself that, OK, you know, that's a recipe for a little bit of red day, right, for us to see a pullback and a correction. But no. Lots of money sitting on the sidelines. Whatever dips we get are getting bought up very, very quickly. And that's exactly what I mentioned in the newsletter as well. Basically mentioned that, okay, uh, just because the markets are overbought and overextended does not mean that we're expecting a pullback or a correction. It just means that market momentum is very strong. There's a lot of greed, a lot of euphoria to the upside. Um, but of course, the, the risk reward is not that favorable and the downside risk far outweighs the upside potential in this market at the moment. So the next FOMC meeting is going to be in seven days. Uh, so that's going to be accompanied by the summary economic projections. And this is what the market's pricing in still. We're looking at about three to four rate cuts in 2024 is what the market's pricing in. Uh, you'll notice that Meta pushing higher, Microsoft, you got NVIDIA, Amazon, uh, Adobe, Oracle up over 11%, Eli Lilly, Costco, all these stocks rallying all the day. Pretty much the entire market was green. And again, if you take a look at some individual sectors, most sectors were green uh, with the exception of utilities. In the last one week, everything is green. Uh, technology kind of leading the way along with comm services. We got materials, energy, defensive, healthcare, financials, everything pushing higher. In the last one month, of course, we got everything up except for comp services three months everything is green half year performance everything is green every sector is pushing higher except for energy which is flat in the last one year once again technology and comp services have rallied the most up over 40 to 58 percent and year to date again technology is leading the way so if you come over to volatility here dropping back down pretty aggressively down about nine percent after the market's pushing higher as aggressively as they did uh, this friday is also triple witching so we do have lots of options and index futures and contracts kind of expiring on the same day so there could be an increased volatility and tomorrow i believe we've also got the ppi number so producer price index also a very very important metric uh related to inflation that's going to be coming out um in the u.s and that again is going to give us a little bit more of an idea on where overall inflation and, and prices for raw materials for producers uh really is at the moment so volatility dropping back down about nine percent uh next level is going to be somewhere between 11 and 12 for the VIX. Uh, Ether, uh, just under 4,000 now. We are very overbought, overextended here, so it's not surprising that we're seeing a bit of a pullback. And Bitcoin also now back under 71,000 um, at the moment. Crude oil prices also consolidating sideways in and around $77, $70 a barrel. And resistance is going to stay put at 80, 81 bucks. And support level is going to stay put at 73, 72, 71 dollars per barrel um, at the moment for crude oil. Now, coming over to uh, the markets, of course, we got the SP 500 continues to trade in very much of an uptrend uh, in the weekly time frame also uh you know very very supportive of that upside momentum upside bullish trend with that uptrend of higher highs and higher lows macd incredibly overbought at 77 and so is the rsi uh, and this has just been consistent weeks of green after green the nasdaq is also in a very similar situation kind of coming up back to its resistance of 16,300, tapping up to that resistance support level is going to stay put at 15.3 down to as low as 15.1 for uh for the Nasdaq as well. So resistance at close to around 16,300, support level is going to stay put at 15,200 15,300 for the Nasdaq as well. All the way down to as low as about 14.5 for the Nasdaq. Uh talking a little bit about Apple. Now Apple did uh recover back up over 28 basis points, so we have seen a little bit of greenery for Apple, but it is incredibly oversold, which is exactly why it makes for a good trade idea. I did highlight some of the levels to watch out for in the newsletter for MoneyVest that I published in our Discord. So again, link's going to be down below if you want to join and access all the features and all the benefits. Uh, next one's going to be Google. So Apple and Google, both of them actually do make for a pretty decent swing trade. Google's already on the way back up. We talked about this uh, you know, a few days ago. It's already up close to 6% with the RSI looking pretty solid. MACD also pushing back up almost on the verge of crossing over that signal line. Talking about Amazon and Amazon here also just consolidating sideways for the most part. Coming up to that resistance of 175, 176, uh, and just consolidating sideways in and around those levels. Support level is going to step put at 155 with a huge gap to potentially fill for Amazon in the future. Tesla uh, consolidating sideways. So basically flat day. Tesla does look very, very weak. I'm not going to lie. There is a little bit of a bear flag here forming. And the next stop could be in the 150s for Tesla in case we get a bigger breakdown. And I will be doing a more separate, more dedicated video on Tesla and on Apple as well, uh, similar to what I already did um, in the past. So talking about NVIDIA now, NVIDIA pushing higher once again, up over 7%. So lots of buyers 
uh, stepping back in whatever dips we can get for nvidia buyers scoop in to grab more shares and from its lows of about 840 it's already valued over 9.7 almost 10 percent once again all i'm gonna say is just be cautious be alert on where nvidia is at the moment on the weekly time frame monthly time frame this is an extremely extremely overbought stock here considering how much momentum it has seen over the last uh you know six to eight weeks more or less uh, i mean 90 rsi on the weekly time frame that's just some extreme levels <laughs> here advanced micro devices we're looking at our side over 78 magdi also extremely uh, overbought but consistent move to the upside and the price action itself you know rallying over 122 percent support level is going to step down to 160s 150s down to as low as 120s and 130s for amd so we got a long way to go before these semi stocks actually become viable and investable and tradable uh, at lower and lower prices uh talking about paypal and paypal here on the day just flat so not really going anywhere but this right here is the downtrending channel of lower highs and lower lows and there are some very important support levels to keep in mind so this right here number one number two support at around 60 dollars and resistance going to stay put at 65 dollars for paypal visa on the other hand up also pushing up uh this week it's up over 1.3 1.4 percent so lots of buyers uh once again stepping in at those levels here as soon as we get a little bit of a dip uh resistance is going to stay put around the all-time highs it's going to stay put at 286 uh, and of course support level near term is going to stay put at 275 down to a much stronger much better support and an area of demand in 249 250 dollars for visa um so next up we have got um uh, so google we already covered let's go over meta platforms and meta here also recovering a little bit up over 3.3 percent so the entire magnificent seven and big tech companies were green starting with nvidia pushing up over seven percent meta up over 3.3 microsoft up 2.6 amd amazon netflix google and apple tesla was the only company that was more or less flat here but meta also trading at a valuation that is or could be considered as somewhat expensive um in support that was going to step down to 386 dollars uh all the way down to a much much stronger much better support in the 270s but of course it's going to take a long time and a lot of sort of bearish catalyst to to get us down to that level and of course we've got a huge gap to fill between um around 400s and 445 440 dollars uh, and finally we got microsoft and phase and costco and microsoft with a huge rally on the day pushing up over 2.6 percent uh market gaps back over three trillion dollars uh lots of consolidation in this area uh, with a resistance it's going to stay put at 418 420 and support level is going to stay put at 399 close to 400 dollars per share for microsoft so a lot of consolidation sideways in that range for microsoft and support all the way down to 364 down to 349 dollars for microsoft and finally we got enphase and enphase energy selling off quite aggressively here down on the day almost six percent uh we did see a little bit of that momentum back up to 130 135 dollars and then selling right back down inside this green rectangle and that support once again at about 108 109 dollars per share all the way down to 92 93 dollars for end phase so lots of consolidation sideways in that range for end phase with a resistance staying put all the way up to 138 to as much as 151 dollars per share and then finally we got costco recovering a little bit after two three days of consistent selling pressure from highs of well over 780 dollars down about nine and a half percent and then pushing back up over three percent on the day so bottom line is that we did see a lot of momentum back higher for a lot of technology a lot of growth oriented stocks i mean adobe was up oracle was up i will be doing separate more dedicated videos and analysis on both adobe and oracle those are both very very good solid businesses um but i do believe that we did see of course energy prices recover month over month so that increased um you know in the inflation report that we just got and then on top of that we did have food prices come down a little bit further still accelerating year over year uh, just over one percent and i think owner's equivalent rent which was up about 0.4 percent may have been a little bit of a bright spot for the markets to be optimistic about but at the same time i think the higher unemployment uh from last friday also adding a little bit more of the catalyst a little bit more um uh, fuel to the fire to the upside being more optimistic being more uh, you know euphoric uh in the markets here because higher levels of unemployment only accelerates the probability for quantitative easing and rate cuts moving forward but at the same time when you've got a sticky inflation that kind of uh, really does uh create an interesting dynamic for the federal reserve which again all the four scenarios were broken down in our newsletter if you want to read through that and of course spend some time 
time uh, understanding our analysis. So hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time. And the link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. There's a few more spots opened uh, for the rest of March. And there is a 16% annual discount that's available until the end of this month as well that you can take advantage of. And uh, you will be part of our moneyvest.com platform launch that we're going to be doing here uh, fairly soon. So link's going to be down below. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.